low ferritin in men on TRT, what could be the cause? Uh, what are the exact numbers for calling it low? What labs to check? Uh, maybe iron, ferritin and others. And what are the solutions? This is the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. And if you want to learn all about the science-based information on this topic, consider subscribing, hit that notification bell, and you'll be on your way. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not a hematologist. I'm not even an internist. I'm a prep med doc. So I'm going to come at this with, you know, some anecdotes and some, you know, some clinics, clinical evidence too. Um, ferritin, first of all, as you know, Stephen, is not the same thing as iron. People think they're the same. Iron is iron, and ferritin is the, the body's chief storage protein for iron. One is iron, one stores iron. So it can be somewhat synonymous, and I get the, the, the lay person's feeling that, but they're not synonymous. Matter of fact, you know, we follow ferritin many times, and I follow ferritin, but many times that's the first thing that will start going down as a preclinical evidence before full-blown anemia uh, presents itself as decreased H and H. So it's a good marker to follow in iron studies and overall health because, as you know, iron is a pro-oxidant. And ferritin also, as an acute phase reactant, can be a pro-oxidant. The problem I have with ferritin is that there's a wide range of, in the labs, uh, in the lab manuals, as to what's normal. A very, very wide range. Uh, my research indicates that in, in, in men, a wide, a, the normal range is 12 to about 300 nanograms per milliliter. That is a tremendous range. In women, it's a little lower, 12 to 150 nanograms per milliliter. So if you look at that range and think, mm, could there be an optimum level somewhere in that? And yes, there. So also in the general conventional hematology textbooks and lab manuals, it says that anything under 12 nanograms per ml always indicates iron deficiency, always. And yet, on the other side, greater than 80 nanograms per ml essentially excludes iron deficiency. So, nice, nice little pearl right there. Anything under 12, you're going to be iron deficient. Anything over 80, good chance you're not iron deficient. But back to that wide range. The book by um, P.D. Mangan. P.D. Mangan. And uh, <clears throat> it's called Dumping Iron. Not you know, play on pumping iron, dumping iron. His research, I tend to concur that the optimum range for men in particular is his, his range, 50 to 70. Before we continue, if you appreciate the content we bring to this channel, check out the Amazon links in the description of this video. These are the links to the products we use, going from supplements, protein powder, pre, post, intra-workout, anti-aging cream, sunscreen, needles and syringes to inject, and so on. If you'd like to purchase one of those products, please use the direct link so that it will earn us a few cents as a tip and you'll be guided directly to the products we recommend. Thanks in advance. All links should work on the US, Canadian, and UK Amazon stores. And I, I, tend, to like it, I tend to like it above 70, 70 to 90 because I find that thyroid function isn't one of the, one of the factors, caveats that I, I achieve to get thyroid function optimized other than, I mean, there's other things, but one thing I look at, ferritin level. And if your ferritin below 90, um, I'm, I feel that your thyroid function isn't up. So I like it around 90 to 100, P.D. Mangan says 50 to 70. So if you look at, you know, my clinical experience with P.D. Mangan writes his book, you're looking at 70 to 90. I feel it's a good range where you're, you're on the low side of that wide range of normal. But you're, 
in the zone where you're going to th maximize thyroid or optimize thyroid function and not be in the pro-acute phase reactant or pro-oxidant phase of having too much ferritin. And of course, you know, we all know that one of the uh, one in 50 people, about 2% of people will have a gene that predisposes them to iron overload. You have to rule out hemoprotonosis. So iron is a, is a, a micronutrient that you have to watch. There's a downside to having too much iron. So in summary, I feel that 70 to 90 is a good range for men to, be a, to, both, to both, both optimize their thyroid and minimize a downside of uh, potential anemia. Right. And how do people check that? Is it just iron and ferritin in the blood? Yeah, TSAT, transfer and saturation, uh, iron, total iron binding capacity, TIBC, uh, a ferritin, of course, H and H. You got to look at that's a general anemia workup. And what I find is though that obviously, the as in the main, the book, pumping iron, if you're iron overloaded or if you have in too high of ferritin or too high of H and H, you, you want to donate blood. You want to donate, you know, whole blood. That's that's been around forever. It's still the the tried and true method to take care of a iron overload syndrome. Now I have people come in their their ferritins they donate too often, and their ferritins under twelve. So I just you know, how do you bolster iron in the in the body? You take in more heme iron, which is red meat and it's essential. You can get, get non-heme iron through plants, green plants, but I feel that heme iron is the best. Of course, what, which vitamin tends to augment the absorption of, of uh, iron in the body is vitamin C. Mm -hmm. So vitamin C with uh, iron supplementation, uh, I mean, blackstrap molasses, uh, sesame seeds, uh, Prunes, they have a lot of iron in them. So it's another way you can augment your iron, but definitely red meat mm -hmm. is primo, the best method to get your iron levels up. Okay, great. And now do this next, click on one of these thumbnails to learn a ton more about TRT and hormone optimization. Mm -hmm.